Hello, and welcome to Alpha Laval's presentation on solutions and innovations in mechanical thickening and dewatering. We are a leading supplier of thickening, dewatering, filtration, fluid control, and wastewater treatment solutions for industrial and municipal water and wastewater applications. We're going to talk about how to evaluate solutions in thickening and dewatering so that you can select the right equipment to meet your individual requirements. We're also going to talk about some of the most recent innovations in the industry and how they may help you save time and money and improve your process. Let's start with talking about three of the biggest challenges frequently mentioned in the industry. The most common challenge faced by water and wastewater facilities when it comes to sludge and residuals management is about reducing cost. In some wastewater treatment plants, sludge management costs can be 50% or more of the total expenditures for the facility. Any savings in this area can have a big impact on the overall operating budget of the plant, so most are keen in identifying ways to reduce handling and shipping costs, reduce maintenance expenditures, polymer usage, and the time needed from plant personnel to operate and maintain equipment. Another concern that's often talked about is how to deal and manage with increasing demands on facilities. Flexibility to upgrade for the future and the ability to save space when real estate is limited can be critical factors that impact which equipment should be chosen for a specific application and need. Finally, Sustainability is becoming more and more important as the demands of reducing our impact on the environment and everything tied to it is paramount. We're going to cover some of the major technologies that address these concerns and what considerations to look at when deciding what to use. We'll then talk about specific innovations in each that are changing the dynamics of thickening and dewatering and the impact they can have on performance and cost of ownership. Partnership with the manufacturer can play a critical role in engaging and advising on what is available and how it fits to the needs that you have. First, they need to listen. What are your goals? What is most important to you? And how do you need to plan to the future? When it comes to evaluation, they engage by testing sludge in their labs and testing technology options to see what's available. And when it comes to solving the problems, a strong manufactured partner will present choices, they'll be transparent with information, and deliver support from start of the project to the end of service life. Let's start by looking at some sludge thickening considerations. Of course, performance and capacity are table stakes metrics. The equipment has to be able to do what you need it to do both now and in the foreseeable future. Footprint can also be really important, as space and real estate are often in short demand. Keeping power use down can help with the long-term costs, and of course the ongoing maintenance needs of the machine can have big implications to a budget, as well as the amount of polymer used, as this is a significant expense in many operations. Finally, you have things like wash water and noise requirements, which can sometimes go by unnoticed, but can add up. And of course, operator safety and health are always a concern. You'll often see choices for thickening that include rotary drum thickener, the belt thickener, and the decanter centrifuge. Let's briefly talk about each of these and some things you might want to consider when evaluating them for your needs. The drum thickener operates in a very simple way. Flocculated sludge conveys up the inside of a slowly rotating inclined drum filter. Most of the solids in the sludge remain in the drum and exit, and a significant portion of the water phase passes through the filter cloth. A fully enclosed design means that a drum filter will be better at containing odor and can be installed outside if necessary. It runs quietly and has low power requirements. Thickening performance can be adjusted by varying the feed rate, the polymer type and dosage, the drum speed, and the spraying interval. It is possible to achieve up to a 90% reduction in sludge volume with a drum thickener. It has a medium-sized footprint and requires more wash water than, say, a decanter centrifuge would, but is relatively low because it is cleaned intermittently. You'll often see the drum thickener selected when footprint is consideration and when simple operation or an always enclosed design are desired. A belt thickener is also a very simple design. Sludge is mixed with polymer and is distributed over a continuous porous belt. Rows of plows continuously split the sludge flow, releasing water to drain into a pan below. 
An adjustable ramp at the end of the belt allows easy control and its angle will increase or decrease retention time on the belt. The belt thickener has low operator need, low maintenance, and can be enclosed for outdoor installation or to improve odor control. A gravity belt thickener is frequently selected for its simple operation, ability to easily adjust performance, or when it is desired to have the sludge thickening process visible to operators. A decanter centrifuge is the final thickening method we'll talk about. It operates by means of a horizontal cylindrical bowl equipped with a scroll conveyor that rotate at a high rate of speed. The feed enters the centrifuge through a stationary inlet tube in the center and is accelerated into the bowl by a distributor. We call this distribution area the feed zone. The bowl and conveyor rotate at a slightly different speed, allowing the conveyor to push cake solids up the inclined cone of the bowl, also called a beach, and out, while the clean centrate exits the other end of the centrifuge. The components exposed to liquid are often protected by replaceable parts made of something like tungsten carbide. Decanter centrifuges deliver high performance and capacity in a very compact footprint. For thickening applications, they use a low amount of polymer and are completely enclosed to provide odor control compared to open equipment. Decanter centrifuges are typically selected for larger plants when the flows would require large amounts of real estate for other technologies. So let's walk through and compare the thickening options. From a capacity standpoint, all three have high capacity, but the centrifuge has slightly more, and with its small footprint, its capacity per square foot of floor space is high. When it comes to power consumption, the decanter centrifuge uses a fair bit more, but as you'll see in a moment, new innovations are improving power usage significantly in the centrifuge. From a maintenance perspective, most good manufacturers' equipment will be designed to minimize maintenance. However, because the, the decanter centrifuge is rotating at a high speed, that comes with maintenance on things like bearings and wearing parts. This is usually performed at predictable intervals and advances in technology like remote monitoring can help ensure trouble-free operation. Polymer use in thickening is relatively close, but some new advances in centrifuge technology can give it an advantage over other equipment. The belt thickener and drum thickener require higher amounts of wash water versus a decanter centrifuge, but because of the high speed operation of the centrifuge, it is the noisiest of the three technologies, which for some may be a consideration. Your individual situation and requirements will help determine which of these priorities matter the most. And your manufacturer's role is to listen, help evaluate your needs, and to provide options so you can make the best decision for your specific situation. Now let's talk about an innovation in thickener technology that may have an impact on performance and cost of ownership. One innovation we're seeing in decanter centrifuge thickening is the low turbulence feed zone. At Alpha Laval, we call this VecFlow, and it can actually be added as a modification to some existing centrifuge models. As we mentioned, the feed zone is where the sludge enters the centrifuge and begins its thickening process. By keeping this feed zone low turbulence, it reduces the disturbance in the centrifuge pond. The result of this is a polymer reduction typically 10% or even as high as 30% in some cases. You will also often see power savings in the 10 to 20% range over a traditional centrifuge, as well as an improved recovery. All of this combines for a centrifuge that is more efficient and comes with a reduced cost of ownership making it a much more attractive option for facilities that maybe weren't considering one otherwise. Sludge dewatering equipment has a similar set of considerations as thickening, but the focus on dryness is of course much higher as hauling and disposal costs of dewatered solids can be very high, and every percent of dryness could be thousands and thousands of dollars in value. Capacity and flexibility for the future and footprint are often high in the list for similar reasons as thickening, the cost of ownership factors such as power, polymer use, labor, and maintenance should always be considered, as well as operator environment facts like noise. Popular choices for dewatering applications include the plate press, which are seen more in industrial and waterworks applications, the belt filter press, and the decanter centrifuge. 
let's talk about each and some of the things you might consider when evaluating them for your needs. A plate press is suitable for certain municipal applications such as waterworks residuals or industrial applications depending on the needs and sludge properties of the facility and where batch operation is acceptable. A plate press delivers the highest dryness of what we are discussing today. In municipal applications, dry solids can be up to 40%. Dryness of 90% or higher on some industrial applications is also possible, with the solids capture rate greater than 99% in most cases. Polymer and power usage is also low, and it is available in a variety of configurations, including a fully automated version. The plate press, also called a plate and frame filter press, is operated by utilizing a stack of plates that are compressed together. Slurry is pumped in between the plates and the chambers are gradually filled up and pressurized via a feed pump. The solids compress and form a cake in the chamber between the plates. As pressure rises, clean filtrate is pressed from the slurry and drains from the plate press. Sometimes the plates incorporate membranes that can be pressurized to apply additional pressure on the cake. When complete, the plates are then separated and the dry cake falls into a capture chute below the press. Once the process is complete, the filter plates are cleaned and the next batch can begin. The belt press is a mainstay in biosolids and residuals dewatering. They are flexible and easy to operate and provide high dryness in a variety of applications. Innovations in belt press technology are leading to even higher performance and we are starting to see dryness closer to something like a centrifuge. They are typically available in a variety of sizes and configurations and can handle high flow rates. Many designs are able to be upgraded or expanded if future needs change the process. They use low polymer and power and are a reliable, time-tested dewatering method. The belt press dewatering process begins when flocculated sludge enters a distribution box and is spread over the width of a gravity deck that consists of a continuous porous belt. As a product moves down the belt, plows, also called chicanes, repeatedly split the flow and starts the process of releasing water from the product. The porous belt allows water to escape and drain into a collection pan below. The thickened product then moves into the pressure zone of the belt press and is squeezed between high pressure rollers that gradually decrease in size. More advanced designs on the market will allow for adjustment of the wedge prior to the pressure section as this will control the initial shear that the product sees. After pressure is applied, dry cake then exits the press and the belts are cleaned with a spray bar. The belt press is a very common method used by thousands of wastewater plants around the world. They continue to evolve, adding new performance features and capabilities. We'll talk more about some of these innovations in just a few minutes. A decanter centrifuge is the final dewatering method we'll talk about. Its design for dewatering operates generally the same as one for thickening, so we won't review that again. But there are some differences in how the machine is set up. The angle of the cone of the bowl, the feed zone, and the pond depth are typically set up differently as the dryness requirements are different. A decanter centrifuge provides high cake dryness and can handle the highest amount of capacity per square foot of its compact footprint. Once the centrifuge is set up and optimized, it often runs with little to no operator intervention. It is a high speed piece of rotating equipment though, so it requires periodic maintenance to address wear and tear. It also has higher power consumption than other types of dewatering equipment such as a belt press. It is fully enclosed, which is helpful in reducing odor. You often see decanter centrifuges selected for medium to large wastewater treatment plants because the footprint required for other technologies would be much, much larger. Now let's walk through and compare the three technologies we talked about. Both the centrifuge and the plate press have a very high capacity per machine, but the compact nature of the decanter centrifuge gives it a very high capacity for its size. When it comes to dryness, the plate press delivers the highest dryness, but it must be run in batch operation, so is typically used in waterworks or industrial wastewater applications. As we mentioned before, the decanter centrifuge has the smallest footprint of the three technologies, but also requires more power and may have slightly higher maintenance because of the need to occasionally maintain high speed bearings. In dewatering, the decanter centrifuge uses slightly more polymer than a belt press, 
but the belt press does require more wash water. A plate press can sometimes require more operator attention, but there are options that will automate the process, so this may not always be the case. And finally, because of the high speed operations, the decanter centrifuge will produce more noise than other alternatives. Looking at several of these, as well as the cost of, to dispose of solids, will help you determine an overall cost of ownership as well. As with thickening, your individual situation and needs will help determine which of these priorities to focus on. And your manufacturer should partner with you to understand and provide options to address those needs appropriately. When it comes to dewatering, the industry is always looking for ways to achieve higher dryness and lower total cost of ownership. One area where some innovation is taking place is in the realm of the belt press. What you see here is probably familiar to many of you, the low gravity deck that an operator can walk up to at ground level and a vertical pressure section with high cake discharge have been around a while. The industry has adapted and accommodated requests and there are some new innovations though that have significant impact on performance and maintenance. One of these innovations is in what is often seen as a very simple part, the plows or chicanes on the gravity deck. An example is what you see here in a patent pending design from Alf Lavelle that is called the dry boost plow. It works in a way that not just splits the sludge flow, but also turns it over onto itself, releasing more water faster. From our field tests so far, the results can be significant with one to five percentage points more dryness depending on the sludge and process and potential throughput increase as high as 25% or more. Alphaval's new advanced KPZ high solids belt press is equipped with these, and it is possible to retrofit some older design belt press and gravity belt thickeners with a simple wet end upgrade. In terms of maintenance, manufacturers are beginning to address some of the key areas where problems have occurred in the past. An example of this that is shown here is an all stainless steel bearing housing from Alpha Laval called the Fortress Bearing. It's designed to protect the bearings more effectively than a vinyl coated housing would. Maintenance items like this can be sneaky and it can add up with costs from reduced performance and more operator time if they need to be addressed. Another innovation we're seeing in dewatering involves advanced pretreatment of sludge before it even sees a dewatering device. One such example of that is the Arej SLG. Shown here, its process uses compressed air to modify the actual rheology of the sludge and release water at the cellular level, causing solids in the sludge to float and improve dewatering. Adding this prior to a belt press can often give 2% higher dryness or more, as well as improve polymer use and belt press throughput. Also, the entire device fits in a 3 by 5 foot space. Alpha Val has partnered with Arej to bring this technology exclusively with our belt presses in the greenfield and brownfield space. The final innovation we'll discuss today has nothing to do with products. One of the best ways to innovate in dewatering and thickening is to do so with people. Alpha Laval is focused on growing its competency and strength in three key areas so that its customers can benefit. First is its engineering and technical expertise. With the best engineering experts located around the world, including a new decanter innovation center in Denmark, we expect to see more and more development in thickening and dewatering technology. Second is with the representatives that many of you meet and engage with every day. Alphaval works closely with these important partners to ensure they have the tools, training, and support they need to help you be successful with any questions or objectives that you have. And finally, the engagement with our customers does not stop at the time of the sale. Alphaval has an extensive service network and capability with locations around the U.S. and a team of 45 field service engineers designed to ensure that anytime there's an issue, which we hope is rare, you will have the support you need in a timely and professional fashion. This includes enhancing the tools that this team uses to include remote monitoring services, virtual field services, a 24-hour support hotline, and a chat function on our website. We thank you for joining us today and hope that our presentation has helped increase your knowledge of the innovation happening in thickening and dewatering. We invite you to learn more about what we discussed at the website shown here on the page and to visit us at our WefTech virtual booth for a conversation with our experts. Thanks and have a great day.